All right, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Um, this is a joint um, hearing for the Committee on Hawaiian Affairs and Committee on Public Safety and Intergovernmental and Military Affairs. Um, and I'd like to introduce myself, Senator Miley Shimabukuro, Chair of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. Other members of Hawaiian Affairs are Vice Chair, Senator Kurt Favela. Also have member Senator Leslie Hara. Other members are Senator Jarrett Keohokolole and Senator Tim Richards. This hearing is being streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate hearings and meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. If you're interested in seeing the written testimony, you can go to our website at capital.hawaii.gov. In the unlikely event that we must abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene and discuss any outstanding business and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. For those testifying remotely, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until it's your turn to testify. As is the committee's practice, there's a two minute time limit per testifier. If there are temporary technical glitches during your turn to testify, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee has already received your written testimony. And members, please wait to ask your questions for the testifiers until we have gone through all the testifiers for that measure. I'll now turn over to Senator Wakai if you want to introduce the um, your committee members. Oh, hi. Uh, we're with the Public Safety and Military Affairs Committee, myself and this uh, Detroit Lions fan next to me. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, for this first um, agenda, we just have one measure. It's SB 2645. This establishes a compliance and enforcement program within DHHL to investigate complaints, conduct investigations, and cooperate with enforcement authorities to ensure compliance with laws. So first up, we have DHHL in support. Aloha Chair Shimabukuro and Wakai, Vice Chairs Favela and Elefante and members of the committees. Ovao Oriana Leal, Nahaza Government Relations Program Specialist for DHHL. The department stands on its written testimony in strong support of this measure, and I'm available for questions. Mahalo. Thank you so much. Next, we have the Department of Law Enforcement in opposition. Chair Shimabukuro, Wakai, and Vice Chairs Favela and Elefante, members of the committee. Department of Law Enforcement opposes the bill, and yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm going to catch it later. I know. Um, three things came up during last year. So there's, 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 you know, there's three areas of concern. One is code enforcement, and that's really not a law enforcement function or straight law enforcement function. Uh, the other issue that came up was emergency or 911 response. That isn't something that we can easily replace. That's with the county for fire, EMS, and, and police. And the third thing, which, which is something that, that I think we can deal with, is ongoing criminal activity on Hawaiian homelands. Uh, there's various uh, nefarious activity that, that is a problem in some, uh, some of the homelands. And the Department of Law Enforcement, now that we're stood up, we have our Criminal Investigations Division. And one of the things that we'd like to see is, is some referrals so that our investigators can be working on. One of the complaints that came up last year was, while the detectives or investigators may be working on a, on a case, that information isn't shared with DHHL so that they can then use that information to deal with um, lease violations and, and those issues. Um, the purpose of Act 278 in forming the Department of Law Enforcement was consolidating the state law enforcement assets. It doesn't make sense to now go and treat another outside law enforcement agency when there's ways that we can do it inside, whether it's individual detectives or if there's a need, actually creating a unit specifically for white homelands enforcement. So there isn't a single person in this room that doesn't want the same thing. It's a matter of how do we find a way to get there. And while we oppose the bill, we are we stand along with everybody who wants some kind of law enforcement enforcement actions on Hawaiian homelands, protect our the people in our community. Um, I'm here. I know that I will be called back. <laughs> Thank you very much for Thank your you. testimony. Thank you. Um, next, we have um, Dennis Nevis, Hawaiian Homes Commissioner from Kauai, in support. Um, Kapalama Neighborhood Security Watch, Angela Young, support. Aloha, Angela Melody Young testifying in strong support. 
on behalf of Kapalama Neighborhood Security Walk. Um, so we're testifying in strong support to protect the safety of the community. I don't know the history of this bill and who actually proposed it, but the intent and purpose is to create a DHHL safety group, basically, to protect the health and the safety of the community. And I think this is a good idea. If you've heard of the series of town hall meetings in Y9 on a coolie from Mayor Belangiardi's administration, and there were town halls from Council Member Tyler and Council Member Andrea, the people actually you see in this room were there debating the safety concerns of the community, trying to get more resources to help. So page four, line nine, amends the police powers of DHHL, and it will be able to enforce policing on the land. And the enforcement chief staff officers may be appointed by the director. And um, the office will work with federal, state, and county partners, ensure compliance with Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, and keep the community safe by enforcing state and county laws. And they will be provided $500,000, half a million dollars for that program. Um, I think that's a really good idea. Now, the DHHL, um, I'm not from there, and I don't represent that community, but um, I do um, work with some of the people from there, from our Kapalama Neighborhood Security Walk. Um, I've been trained um, by some of the very active Kapunas from that neighborhood, the Citizens Patrol, and um, you know they work so much. While they are seniors, they go out to all the community events to provide for the next generation, to keep everyone safe. Um, so shout out to Auntie Jody, Auntie Ruth, Ivalani. Um, they're from the um, from that land, and um, they're also beneficiaries and protectors of the land. Um, and they organize um, with a lot of nonprofits and churches, um, and they give out toys to children. They work with bomb threats and TROs. They partner with a team of officers. Um, in a multi-jurisdictional manner, um, and they train in emergency procedure. They call out to the surrounding neighborhoods and districts to organize walks with District 8 HPD. Um, I've seen them in the news with LG and Mayor, and I'm just so blessed um, to witness um, and to be trained um, by the safety group. and. I think that to create such um, a safety group on the DHHL um, homesteads is a very good idea. You can um, summarize, please. And I will summarize um, that resources can include provision of venues for training, flyers, um, additional police officers to walk with the groups. Um, these are practical resources to help support safety in the DHHL community. Also, um, perhaps a request for $1 million for the year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Wana Valley Homestead Community Association, Jen Makepa in support. We have Keokaha Community Association, Patrick Kahavai Ola'a support. Ho'omanapono LLC in support. <laughs> Aloha, my Aloha. Do you want Mr. Chair? Oh, yes, Chair. I'm sorry. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Um, the testimony is not online. It's the testimony, written testimony that the, the Senate receives. Um, it's supposed to be online before the capital strikes, and they're not online, so the public doesn't have, have access to it. And well, that's so interesting because I did that two no, years it's not, ago. No, not, it's not on New York. Oh. This is just a, a, a note to the public. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So the note to the public is that we, I, I, as a member of the committee, acknowledging that um, the public's, in a way, right to receive the, as, as we have in the, traditionally in the past, to receive the t uh, testimony uh, at the time we do, which is at the gavel. Uh, we get it actually earlier. Um, uh, so it's just an acknowledgment. And then we'll, we're on the sorry way Sorry about that. It. Yes, yeah. we're working on it. So sorry. On that. Sorry about that. Because I was going that way and I don't oh. have access to it. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yes, thank you. Okay, <laughs> proceed. All right. So, Dimon Kalai Manole, co manager of Hope Manapono, Native Hawaiian Agusi Yalo, Hawaiian I Coast. And uh, good to see the chair, vice chair, um, Glenn, um, um, Brandon, everybody over here. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, we strongly support this bill. 
and I heard what um, the Sheriff's Department said, but um, Section 101 of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands is a totally different and distinct agency out of all the state agencies. It's a trust, you know what I mean? So um, Section 101 of the Act, the purpose of the Act is to promote self-determination and self-governance. And if we're going to ever get to that place where the state will allow us to be able to practice self-determination and self-governance, we should be able to have our own police um, type of enforcement so that they can immediately react to stuff that's going on in the homelands. Um, the sheriffs, you know, and the law, new law, newly created law enforcement agency, they're a great agency and nobody can take nothing away from them because they're great. I mean, Billy Oku was one of my best friends and he just retired from there. You know what I mean? So I know him a long time. Um, but um, we need boots on the ground immediately. We have our kupuna who's out there pounding a pavement that we're very proud of them. Auntie Jody is here with, with her hui. And they need the backup of people who can react immediately and take the action of the department to be able to shut down the houses immediately. Um, as far as priorities is concerned, the newly created um, public safety um, or law enforcement agency, they're, they're new right now and they still gotta get their stuff together. And we cannot wait to be able to stop what's going on in the homelands. We need to be able to act immediately. So we just ask that, um, that you guys support this, um, especially for the intent of the Hawaiian Home Commission Act to be self-determining, um, self-governance and self-determination. And that means being able to police our own homelands. Thank you. Aloha. Mahalo. Next, we have Regina Gregory in opposition. Um, Lou Faberito, support. Ellen Cardenas Jr. In, in support. We have Karm Akim. These are all in support. Eva Hubbard and we have Randy Awol in support. Did you want to testify in person? Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Awol. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, Senators. Mahalo for allowing me to speak to this issue. Um, my name is Randy Awo. I, I am here today as a Hawaiian Homes Commissioner as well as a beneficiary. I strongly support this bill to establish a compliance and enforcement program within the DHHL to investigate complaints, conduct investigations, and cooperate with law enforcement authorities to ensure compliance with laws and to respond to the voices of our beneficiaries who have been speaking from across the Pai'aina, demanding that we do more to create safer communities, to protect them from crime, and to ensure that we do more to promote quality of life issues within, the, within their communities. I understand that the Department of Law Enforcement opposes this bill, but I believe it prioritizes their capacity building over recognizing the unique challenges of administering to the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. If this opposition continues unabated, our beneficiaries, our beneficiaries will remain in the same situations they have been in for decades, relying on enforcement responses that compete with the broader needs of activities occurring beyond their borders, beyond their neighborhoods. The DLE, DLE while they serve an important purpose, they have limitations. They cannot be all things to all citizens or communities. Native Hawaiian beneficiaries fall under the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, therefore, are in a special class. The Hawaiian Homes Commission exercises governance over the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Therefore, the Commission has and must retain authority over all programs that fall under this federal act. It's the vested authority of the Hawaiian Homes Commission, not the DLE that is mandated to work with our officers to serve our beneficiaries, to oversee lease violations, criminal activity, such as gaming rooms, drug houses, 
illegal squatting, and an array of other criminal matters. Further note, the DLE does not have the authority to cancel leases, particularly, particularly in the most egregious violations that continue to plague our neighborhoods across Hawaii. In addition, there are a multitude of administrative rules that require robust full-time management that DLE, the DLE has no authority, the wherewithal, or capacity to manage. Mahalo. Mahalo, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Samantha DeCourt in support. In person, or the testifier, or Sarit writing. Jermaine Myers in support. Aloha chairs, vice chairs, and members of the Senate Hawaiian Affairs and Public Safety Committees. My name is Jermaine Myers. I'm a Nanakuli Hawaiian homestead lessee. Mahalos to Senator Kyoha Kalole and Senator Sandwin of Ventura for co-authoring this important Senate bill. I'm in strong support and I humbly ask for each of you to vote yes in support of Senate Bill 2645. The Maui fires in Lahaina is an example of negligence when fire hazards were ignored. For many years, DHHL have been ignoring complaints and reports of brush fire hazards, illegal toxic waste dumping, operations of illegal drug and game rooms, and illegal occupancy on DHHL land statewide. According to DHHL's 2022 annual report, over 700 leases, license, right of entries, and revocable permits were issued to non-beneficiary entities that occupy over 64,000 acres of land. In, in addition, almost 10,000 residential, agricultural, and pastoral leases were issued to beneficiaries that occupy over 40,000 acres. Combined, a total of 10,700 families and business entities occupy over 100,000 acres of DHHL lands statewide on six islands in four county jurisdictions. I'll share just one example of DHHL negligence. In 2017, the commissioners unanimously voted to terminate a commercial right of entry lease on DHHL lands in Kalailoa on Oahu due to numerous violations of illegal toxic waste dumping cited by the Department of Health. However, the business entity never vacated the property and continue to operate their business till today. Their illegal operation results in the loss of over $300,000 in revenue for the department and numerous ignored toxic waste violations. DHHL is the responsibility of the state. Their negligence will become the state's financial burden if these public safety hazards continue to be ignored. Please vote in support of Senate Bill 2645 God bless all of you. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you, Jermaine. Next, we have um, Alan Urasaki in opposition. That's all the testimony that I have that was received before, but I know we have some walk-ins. And so at this point in time, I can welcome anybody that wants to walk in and uh, yeah, testify. Pastor Alan Cardenas? Yes, please come forward. Mahalo for making the journey. Aloha, uh, Senators. Uh, great to see you folks. For the record, Alan Cardenas, Jr. from Nanakuli. Um, I support this. I strongly support this. The reason why is over the last couple of years, <clears throat> we have Native Hawaiians dying waiting for lease, but are thousands. And at the same time, we have some people on Hawaiian homestead lands that are terrorizing people within our own community. We as a community are tired of being terrorized in our community. There's three specific uh, homes in Nanakuli that we're dealing with. One is in Nani Ahi Ahi. Uh, it seems to be a disconnect with the different agencies in effectively shutting down that house. And this house was right after the Diamond Head incident where there was a fire and two police officers lost their life. We've been asking the government agencies to shut that down before there's another incident and fire. Unfortunately, because of the disconnect in the system, uh, they, we had a fire. 
and we were terrorized right there in the valley. So that's one example. The second example is in Kelana Avenue, 18 plus long years, known drug house, uh, known violence. I got a three ring binder about two and a half inches thick. And I don't understand, and, and I went to public school and maybe I should have started study more, but I don't understand why it takes over 18 years to if, shut down this house when a lot of our community members were asking for help. The last house is on Poor Ave, right next to our church. On December 9th, we had information. And again, I've been asking the department for help for years. And unfortunately, nobody was willing to do anything. And I said, I'm going to go in. If nobody does anything, I'm going to go in with an excavator and some roll-offs. I'm going to clean it up by myself. And then the department said they're going to do it. Well, that was two years ago and nothing happened. On December 9th of last year, someone is paying a squad on a property $4,000 a month to use that for a game house. So we're tired of being terrorized. I think we need a fresh, powerful, effective approach. I, I love and support people in the Department of Law Enforcement. I've got good friends and family there. Um, but I, I think we need something and something now, something first, something powerful. So I canceled my hair appointment and then my nails to get done, to, to come here, <laughs> to ask you guys to hear. Hear the hearts of our And this is not just in Nanakuli. I'm at the commission meeting almost every month, and this problem is going on from Kauai to Kau, from Hanale to Hilo. So hopefully you hear the hearts of our people, the health and safety of our Kiki and our Kupuna. So with that said, thank you again for allowing me to testify. Love and appreciate you all. My name is Alan Cardenas, Jr., and I approve this message. Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, Pastor Alan. <laughs> yes, yes, please come forward. Aloha. Aloha. Humble to be in front of you guys. Uh, my name is Mana Olai. Uh, I'm blessed to be in a position of being the founder and president of God Forgive Bad Boys and Bad Girls. I am in full support of this bill. This is the first time I'm ever supporting a bill in my life. Um, you know, because I come behind from incarceration and uh, being a former gang leader and a former shot caller. Um, I speak on this behalf because um, I'm not looking from the outside in. I'm actually looking from the inside out uh, because I was once part of the destruction and I confess because I've been on Hawaiian homelands participating in the game rooms in there. Also was a security for the game rooms on Hawaiian homelands. Um, <clears throat> also been in drug houses on Hawaiian homelands. And um, I know what happens. I know the environment. I know the chaos. I know the violence. I know everything that happened is very bad. Um, and today, uh, as my life changes, <clears throat> I have to support this bill because now being part of the destruction, one time in my life today, uh, our mission is to be part of the solution. And, um, you know, I have to support this bill because I do have a, a, a members that uh, walk alongside me, about 4,500 members that believe in everything that we're moving on. And we participated in um, neighborhood security walk with my Kumu Jody Akao back there, who introduced me to that. And we took it to another uh, level uh, because of we participated uh, in this NSW, it grew. Uh, we started off in Hawaiian homelands, uh, Kanahili, uh, Kaupea. Uh, we actually went in uh, Keolanas, and it didn't end there. Uh, we were actually brought in it out all the way down to Wainai Makaasai. And um, I wanted to um, express this because, <clears throat> you know, one of the biggest things that um, I saw when me and Pastor Allen went to Maui two times because they was having some problems on Lea Ali, Hawaiian homestead line. And what happened was the people was going up there and they were stealing on Hawaiian homes and lands because the people was in the hotels. And then when we drove into Hawaiian homelands up there in Maui, they had signs up there. The people was taking back the community, the Hawaiian people from the homelands. And the sign says, Kapu, if you don't live here, don't come in. And so I noticed that first thing and I saw how the people was getting involved. And the reason why also I support this bill to have this force on Hawaiian homelands because you want to build relationships, right? Because I know from what my experience that I saw that the HPD and the enforcement now, there's actually boundaries. From what I gathered and what I heard and what I listened to, there's actually boundaries where they cannot go any further. Please summarize. But, but as you um, build a force for distinctly for Hawaiian homelands, guess what happens? Now you have um, a relationship that can build. You know, I'm gonna share something with you. You know, if I was on Hawaiian homelands 
and I know that there was an enforcement field, uh, enforcement agent on that Hawaiian homeland that specifically uh, protects Hawaiian homelands. And as a former destructor in the community, I wouldn't go in the community if I knew that. And so I'm here uh, to say that I fully support this. And you know, it, you know, I'm, I wish I, I could have been a, like deputized to protect this community in my position, but I cannot. Right? This is the first time I'm doing this. I want to support this bill. Very unconventional and very uncommon from somebody with my background to support the force. And I believe in it because why? Because we need it. And not only for Hawaiian homestead land, we need it for all our communities. You know, at least a voice of today being heard, um, want to be heard. And um, I believe, um, as God once told me, that he want to utilize my past life uh, to give him glory and help with the community. And I have valuable information and input because, like I said, I'm looking from the inside out. I'm not looking as I haven't, maybe um, people haven't participated in that life, but I have, and I understand, and I know how important it is for this bill to pass. My name is Mana Olayan. <clears throat> God forgive bad boys and bad girls. I'm humbled and grateful uh, to, to be on my peace for this. Thank you Thank so you. much. All right. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. Yes, yes, Kaliturui, mahalo you. for being here. Thank you, Aloha. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, before I open up, I just wanted to um, support everybody, what everybody else says. And um, just correction with Pastor Allen, um, in 2019, they came to the commission as a former commissioner. Um, this house in Kealana was 18 years. So this year is 20, 2024. So it's not 18 years anymore. And so they are in an appeal system. We still have these problems in Nanakuli, Kealana, um, to shut a game room and everything. The second, I also wanted to thank our um, uh, Vice Chair Senator uh, Kurt Fafella because he has come out to the town meetings in Nanakuli supporting wave signs, bully signs that we do. He has supported, I've seen him tirelessly after his Senate hearings out at many neighborhood security watches, walking the community with all of these people. And so his heart and his boldness to support this effort is very commended and thankful, um, Senator. We appreciate you very much for your leadership. Thank you. But I do, I am here speaking on to support to help us, to help us. Um, you know, as a former commissioner, I spent four years and we traveled from Moku'u to Wa'inai and all of the meetings that we have attend was a cry of help was a cry of help from Maku'u, you know, beneficiary Naole, who's almost 92 years old, crying for help. Please help me get this meth home closed. Please help us to live so we Kapuna can come out of our homes and enjoy their aina, their land. And so with that, I just wanted to thank you for this opportunity, Senators, and um, wish you a happy new year. And thank you to our um, uh, our Senator, Miley Shimabukuro. Best wishes and aloha. Mahalo, Mahalo, Mr. Ria. Yes, please come forward. Thank you. Aloha, Senators and Committee. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Ivalani Lebon McBurr. I'm the president of Kaupea, and I fully support this bill. Um, and thank you also to our vice chair. This, this bill, I've been in my Hawaiian home for 17 years. Jody in Kanahili has been a little less than me, maybe 15 years. We have seen crime that you can think of from sex trafficking to drugs to gaming. And I want to acknowledge, you know, our vice chair, because as you know, recently there's been a shooting in my community. This is very important. And I know the act gives us that self-governance to determine what we want. And I support this bill because in the second week of January, the Shaw had a meeting with the Department of Hawaiian Homes, and we shared these things. And we are in the process of working with the enforcement program. Like everybody said, we cannot wait. We don't know if that person got shot because when it's crime, no one talks. And Senator, because you shut down those houses, now I'm saying I need help from my community. I'm not waiting. I have the oldest Kapuna, 89 years old. And I will do whatever it takes to keep my community safe and healthy. We cannot wait, Miley. We have made it known. And to me, the risk I take is by doing nothing. But I stand here to support 
because like Commissioner Owl said, self-governance, the Hawaiian Home Commission Act, is really a detail for us Hawaiians to self-govern and determine what is best. DLE, they're doing the best that they can, but there has to be a movement going forward. And if you know the crime on the west side, it is not getting any smaller. It's getting crazy. The least that I thought would happen in, in my community. But I'm urging all of you folks to take a really good look at what is happening and the importance of what this enforcement for us Hawaiian homesteaders mean to all of us. Um, Jody, maybe you can share a little bit about what happened recently at the shutdown of that home. I'm Jody Akau, and I'm from Kanahili Homestead in Kapalei, and I support this bill. And first, I want to say thank you, Kurt, for helping us to shut down the game room and being out there at midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock a.m. Yes. in the morning. And yes, we did. We were able to close five drug houses and one gaming room in our homestead. Yes. So it is a problem. So we, we strongly support it. And um, we hope going forward that um, it, it can bring the change that's needed to keep our community safe and healthy. Mahalo. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Anyone else here to testify on SB 2645? OK. Seeing none, um, members, questions? Questions. Vice Chair Phil? Hawaiian Homes. <laughs> oh, no, everybody, get your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Anticipating there, that's good. That's good. <clears throat> I, I get one question, and I know we, um, you guys know I 100% support this. Um, this is something that I think was well overdue on, like everybody said, self governance. But we have some people in the room, the pastor, um, Ellen and Auntie Jody Dam and other people that participate in their own community. How, how do Hawaiian homes feel as we move forward as the enforcement? I don't know how much people, how much people are you looking at with that 500,000 that you guys are going to get to uh, create this enforcement? We have filled two FDE positions. We are looking to fill five more. The appropriation that we have requested is not just for staffing. We also understand that we need more resources for training and equipment as well. The reason why I'm saying this, um, and it was brought up by the security watch team, that you know, like anything else, you know me is uh, self-governing and work within. You know, did you guys ever think of going to these neighborhoods that have their active neighborhood security watch? That guys that is actually vested in the community and kind of knowing that maybe you guys can deputize them or um, not, not necessarily have the enforcement, but having more of a part of um, being a part of the enforcement on Hawaiian homelands. Because these things that I'm hearing in Nanakuli and all the other areas, you know, um, if, if we had our way, it'd be different. But we want to try to follow the law. And right now the law is, so can, can you guys maybe take this back to Kali and the homestead and just see if there was to be a way to have, um, oh, thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, mahalo for the question. I will attempt to answer it. Yes. Um, as a former administrator for Division of Conservation and Resources Enforcement, I've been around um, community watch programs and I, I know the limitations of what a community can do. Right. So deputizing a citizen to take on the equivalent to law enforcement responsibilities is very difficult to do because um, that person has to have already have law enforcement experience. They have to be properly trained to to initiate arrests, to issue citations. There's a whole slew of kuleana that comes with that to ensure we're not violating the rights of our citizens. And, the, and therefore, you also have to have the authorization to do it. So when we talk about deputizing citizens, um, that's, from my point of view, that's really not a viable option in terms of building capacity. Really, the capacity comes with building the unit within the department. And I think that's the one everybody tries to keep avoiding and they try to find other ways to get around what's really required. And what's really required for Department of Hawaiian Homelands is to create a legitimate, fully capacitized law enforcement unit 
that has statutory authority to act on behalf of our beneficiaries. As long as we tap, da tap dance around that reality, we're going to keep circling back to ideas that will not work. So, um, so I think this is what's in front of us. It's similar to, and, and I do think, by creating a robust law enforcement agency within the department, we actually help the Department of Law Enforcement. And I say that because what, what will occur is the creation of an equal partnership where we can work together, we can enhance one another's capacity. We, we recognize that the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act requires very specialized skill sets, very specialized training that should be unique to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and our beneficiaries. So this is not a takeaway from the DLE. This is a complement to what it is they're trying to do. And, and this is an opportunity to build partnerships that address all of the various challenges that are unfolding within this very big and diverse community. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. I wasn't going to ask a person from the neighborhood security Washington to put on badge and enforcement. Talking about with training, same like with the high school, we want to have mm -hmm. security guards to be law enforcement. We don't want the law enforcement coming into the school. We want them to train the security there so they get an opportunity to be law enforcement. So I'm saying if there's some people within the organization that's willing to go through the training, they should have an opportunity. I'm not saying security watch going out there with a gun and one badge. No, they need the proper training. So I was just asking mm -hmm. if Hawaiian Homes was open to that, to work with the law enforcement division within Hawaiian Homes to see if we can get those kinds of people to join with them, not rogue or renegade, is to have them, since they're already out there, they know the, they know the playing field, right? Just like what, what Brother Mana said, a lot of our cops and officers that is cops today, they was drug dealers before. They knew the land. So they came cop officers because they wanted to change their life. But not everybody can change their life like that. And I'm just saying, it's an opportunity. I've been around these neighborhood security watch. There's able-bodied people that can go through the training and learn just to have an opportunity. That's all I was asking that uh, Hawaiian Homes Commission, I mean Hawaiian Homes, to take it back to Kali to see if he would entertain something like that to have, the, as you guys already have, if they're entertaining and get anybody from those neighborhoods who knows the hood better than anybody else, if they would want to go to the extensive training. Now, if they don't qualify, of course we're not going to let them in. But I think you misunderstood me. I'm not trying to have that. I know how intense it is because mm -hmm. I wanted this long time. Commissioner, so I'm not trying to mix up the complexity of how our self-government works, but what you need for do too, what you should do is go to one of these security watches and talk to the members that is probably, probably willing to go through the training of the law enforcement, because that's the reason why we get law enforcement there. He never just put on those stores. He had to go through some kind of training, same like with the division. So maybe these guys kind of go out on the street and hold one gun, but maybe they can be secretaries. They can work within the department, but it's self-governing. So why wouldn't we want to go to our people who's trying to attempt that now? So I'm not trying to say this, go put them in there with no laws, no 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 uh, the, uh, education. So you misunderstood what I was saying. Okay, so, yeah. so Kalamai for the misunderstanding. Yeah. Really, I think the common ground here for all of us is how do we um, empower communities through training, as you point out, which I do support. As a commissioner, I've always supported that. But I think what I'm trying to um, create is the different pathways that we must create for ourselves to integrate with communities, with law enforcement responsibilities in such a way that we become the most effective. And so I do understand, and again, Kalamai, my, my explanation was not intended to diminish what you're trying to bring to the table. I'm just to, trying to provide clarity and integration of all the various parts that we need to stand up to become better at how we serve our community. 
Thank you. Thank you. Right. So as the as the question that I had, how would you be able to take that back to Kali? Yes, the department understands the necessity of collaborative engagement with the community and the other departments, and okay. I'd be happy to share that with our Thank chair. You. Yeah, I have a question for Deputy Vincent. Yes, sir. So, you know, look at your testimony, and it seems like you're trying to say something without saying it, because, you know, to say that the legislature shouldn't change the law because the legislature changes the law, that's what we're here for. And to say that the the bill shouldn't go because the department doesn't have law enforcement powers. That's what the bill is proposing. And to say that it will be hard for DHHL to do it or that they're not equipped to do it, I guess, you know, is, is your position in opposition because the bill is missing pieces and needs to be amended to ensure that it will be implemented in the way everyone hopes? Or is your issue because I didn't see this part? Or is your issue that your agency could would and should do this if it was appropriately resourced? Probably a combination. Um, yes, we, you know, we believe our, our criminal investigations division can stand up to help. Um, there's also, with resource, they actually have a dedicated unit for Hawaiian Homelands enforcement. And then while Damon was talking, and he doesn't remember me, I, I worked on some things and that he was involved in uh, 30 some years ago. I'm really glad to see him doing well. Um, I worked with Randy and anyway, while he was talking, you know, it, it hit me, wait, we have another state agency. So Senator, you know, mentioned, mentioned, yeah, while I was going through recruit class and yes, I'm the oldest rookie in the state probably. Uh, while I was going through recruit class, there were some investigators from another agency that were with us. Their director has the authority to confer police powers on their investigators. But before they are allowed to carry firearms and actually serve in that role, they're making them go through the sheriff recruit class. And one of the things that, that we could explore is if White Homelands has investigators who want to give police powers, we put them through recruit class. You know, they mentioned, you know, the cost of training. We have no problem with them training with us. We have officers from other agencies training with us, and uh, that's part of our role is, is being able to provide training. Uh, I know that we would not have any problems with any investigators from uh, Hawaiian Homelands joining a recruit class and going through that. Uh, so that's an uh, option. Uh, she mentioned equipment. Okay. One of the things that, that is lacking is the infrastructure that would be needed for Hawaiian Homelands to stand up an investigative unit with police powers. L lacking in the measure? Yeah, and it, it, somehow it needs to be provided. So one of the, the things that we can do, we're working with- L Lacking in, in the appropriation language in the bill or lacking in the capacity in your own agency? No, the infrastructure and equipment stuff, we are okay. It's, it's probably the measure and, and funding it, but one of the things that we have uh, going on with another one state agency with some of their um, enforcement officers is we're looking to provide them radios and give them a talk group that's that they can access our system if there's problems so that they can call for help or if they're getting ready to do something and they need some assistance they're able to talk with our deputies and work with them uh, we got a bunch of radios that are on their way and we're going to have plenty of radios that if they need comms, that's not a problem. There's a state system uh, that, like it's, it's a state system, it goes statewide. Um, with new radios, if they purchase new radios with LT you know, capabilities, they can actually get up in the valleys. But that's probably not a problem for Hawaiian Islands, mm -hmm. but there's opportunities to help them and their officers with equipment as well. So I think there's a way to figure out how to skin this cat so that we can get some protection and some enforcement. I mean, there isn't a single thing, and, and I appreciate everything that was said today. Uh, you know, some of it's heartbreaking. I mean, I'm, I'm fighting back tears listening to, to one of them, and, but I see it. Uh, you know, I, I see the things happening. And yeah, I'm, 
Uh, I've so only I, been here I think 40 you, years. But I think you've answered it. I mean, okay. the question I was asking without asking is whether you're going to oppose this thing no matter how we no. amend it, we, no matter we, how many times we introduce it, which no. you're saying your position on that is no. So no, so no need to talk. I, need, I, I got we'll, my answer. We'll figure Thank out you. how to work this. That's Thank all. you. Very good. Very good. Other questions? Mm -hmm. Vice Chair? So I remember talking to you, I think, the last time we had this thing up and, and the reason why I'm, I'm saying that this is long time overdue is because if we didn't have your division we'll be still stuck with the sheriffs who had nothing to join in with the community and HPD. HPD will say they're in a jurisdiction, sheriffs don't want enough people, they don't want enough equipment, they have all kinds of excuses. The reason for this self-governing is because they don't have to have the sheriff's approval, your guys' approval, HPD's approval. This is just governing Hawaiian homeland like anything else, any place else in the world. The Native Americans do it. They have their own policing on their native land. That's all we are asking, that we be the enforcers of our land, what is rightfully ours. And if we need assistance from state police or sheriffs, then so be it. But we need to, if we don't start this um, structure, then we're not going to be able to what is the, the, the problems or the, the, the benefits. But we need to start it because everybody in here in, in, in the committee and, and even yourself, Hawaiian Homes is different. It's not like every other department in the state. It's different because the state don't own the land. It's entrusted to them. Who is better to protect the trust? in the Hawaiians, self-governing, okay? So that's just basically what I, and I, I know you oppose them, but we can just, yeah. Okay, thank you, Chair. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we need to, we need to um, recess for decision-making because uh, we have a time constraint for the PSM committee. So let's, let's uh, recess. Okay, we're going to reconvene for decision making on SB 2645. Recommendation of the chairs is to pass um, with amendments. Um, we're going to um, blank out the appropriation, but we're going to put in the committee report that $2 million is uh, an approximate amount that's based on last year's bill that um, DLE came out with that we're going to request of ways and means. Um, we also want to know the committee report that SB 490 SD 2 is still alive as a carryover from last year. That bill contains the language that DLE had, had recommended and, and, and it puts this, these officers in DLE. And so we do have two vehicles, you know, with, with both kinds of language that are still alive and at play. And so I think that's good that we have two different versions and going forward. Um, and that's pretty much the main thing I want to put in, any technical amendments that are needed as well. Any discussion? Can you see then the vice chair for the vote? I see a passing with amendment. Okay, uh, Chair Shubakuru? Aye. Vice Chair vote aye. Senator Ihara? Aye. Senator Keho Kalole? Aye. Senator Richards? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Well, but it could be on public safety, intergovernmental, and military affairs, the same recommendation. Any discussion? If not, Senator Rhodes, I vote yes. Chair's recommendation on SB 2645 is to pass with amendments. Chair votes yes. Uh, Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator Fukunaga is excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Awa. Aye. Recommendation's adopted. All right, we are here. Mahalo. the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs, and our good friends from the Committee on Hawaiian Affairs for our 101 agenda. On this agenda is one measure. Uh, we are going to keep testimony to two minutes. Uh, most of us have read your testimony and would appreciate you standing 
uh, on your testimony because we need to be someplace else in five minutes. Uh, first in our testifiers list, we have uh, Jordan Ching from the Attorney General's office. Chair, good afternoon, Chair Waikai, Chair uh, Shimobu Kuro, Deputy Attorney General Jordan Jing, on behalf of the Department of the Attorney General. The Attorney General is offering comments on this measure, um, the main point being that the uh, Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution generally precludes the state from regulating the activities of federal instrumentalities in the property um, unless um, they receive clear congressional consent. Um, we are not aware of any congressional authorization that allows the state to require a military um, training facility or military reservation to um, fly the Hawaiian flag. Um, so we're going to that. Um, I can be available for questions. Thank you, Jordan. Shelby Billionaire from Royal Hawaiian Kingdom has testified in uh, submit testimony in support. Demont. All right, aloha, Demont Kalemanole. Okay, so with this one, um, the difference um, that we have here is that, like, once again, um, this is on our lands, and the Hawaiian Homes Commission um, Act allows us to be able to exercise self-determination and self-governance on our own lands. That's the purpose of the Act, Section 101. It clearly states that by Congress. So Congress has already spoken about this issue, about um, what the purpose of the act is. And if you're gonna use our lands, um, then you should at least honor our lands by recognizing our flag. Because um, like we had um, Auntie Maxine Kaholeleo and Uncle Kuching, they had to sue just to be able to get Pohakuloa um, fixed with, with uh, all the unexploded ordinances over there. They had to sue the department because they fell in the fiduciary duties to be able to monitor the army on our own homelands. And so when you got people on our lands that have no respect for our lands, um, just trashing our lands, that's a problem. So by recognizing where they at, you know, you go to any country, you see, you go to China, you see the Chinese flag, you go to Japan, you see the Japanese flag, you know, you go to Russia, you see the Russian flag. Well, when you stay in Hawaii and you stay on our homeland, especially our own homelands, what little we have of the state, what's left, they should at least recognize where they're at. And I think that's why our flag should be able to be flown, regardless of the U.S. Constitution and Supremacy Clause. Our rights as Native Hawaiians should surpass all of that in our eyes. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Jamon. Jason Chung from the Hawaii Military Affairs Council. Members, I have uh, 17 individuals submitting testimony. Six are in opposition, 11 are in support. Is there anyone else who should testify on Senate Bill 3016? Chair, members Jason is on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Chair, Jason. That, that's right. Uh, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. So the MAC appreciates the attention behind the measure to recognize a powerful symbol of the Hawaii state flag. However, by federal policy, there are regulations and policies uh, of state flags on official flagpoles, and they differ uh, by all the different uh, armed services. The MAC is working with every installation and every service component on Hawaii right now to find what language has to be submitted to Secretary of Defense for consideration. We will keep the committee informed of the progress and our efforts. Once again, thanks again uh, for the uh, time to provide comment. Thank you. Sorry, members, I failed to look at the Zoom interest. Um, is there anyone else on Zoom? I have Cindy Freitas, as well as Lourdes, Mc... Lourdes Millen. Not okay. present on Zoom, Chair. Is there anyone else in the room that is interested in testifying on this measure? If not, members, any questions for Diamant or Mr. Ching? A question for Mr. Ching, if that's okay. Yep, of course. Please. Well, I'm sorry. I'm... I was actually trying to get the one on the. We'll see, oh, with Zoom the, we'll see, the, we'll see what the military. Oh, done. Chung. Jason Chung. Jason, Chung. you still there? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I am. Oh, thank you. I was curious I, on, on other installations uh, across the United States and different states. Do other um, do other military installations fly the state flag? 
Uh, in certain states, they do. In certain states, they do. So it's not unprecedented then that there would be no. a, a state flag of flying and below. Look, yeah. And if you look at the written testimony, this talk about uh, indoors right now, uh, SECDEF Esper actually allowed uh, state flags to be flown indoors, but the outdoor was never addressed. So there's just some language that has to be adjusted and pushed back up through the uh, proper chain to okay. get uh, adjudicated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Members, uh, Senator Yuhara. Yeah. Um, similar question. Well, Mr. actually, Chung? not. Mr. Chung uh, or to who? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chung. Yep. Jason, you still there? IT, could you bring Jason back if he's still there? Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, uh, question to Jason, uh, or maybe even the Attorney General, but. Um, you know, the, I guess there's a written agreement or a lease or some kind of a document that allows um, the military to use um, these lands. Uh, and I'm wondering if there is any provision in these documents that prohibit or allow or recognize the flying of the state flag on these uh, lands. Um, would you, anyone know? Would you know, Jason? No, sir, I do, I do not know. We'd have to get back to you on that. Would the Attorney General know? We would have to review any individual piece for that information. Okay. Um, is there a way to get, um, receive that back? Could, if you get to find out if there is any provision in any of the documents, because um, if there is agreement, um, Jason, then um, if there's a way to put it in the documents or an <coughs> amendment or at least some kind of acknowledgement that um, in part um, out of respect for the use of the lands, um, in addition to other purposes in other states, they must have other reasons to put uh, their state flags on military reservations, but uh, they can use the same reasons in addition um, uh, out of respect for the lands. We would like to have uh, the Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian flag, the state flag be placed on those, um, those lands. Sorry, just to clarify, um, your, is your question to um, review like every individual lease that is, or is it more so a legal question as to whether or not a lease agreement could effectuate some kind of? Some maybe, uh, maybe Demont, if there's a maybe just a few, just to check to see uh, as to form, uh, I would assume that it's not. I mean, I, I don't know if what kind of negotiations went on when we got the lands uh, like way back, right? Long not, time not ago. Every installation is on state land too. So there's yeah. a number of leases. Yeah. So we can take a, maybe a, 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 um, a one per island or something just to, just to check to see if, um, if there is something like that. Senator Cobell. Thank you, Chair. Just wanted to um, give some updates. So since the original discussion in 2022-2023, Public Affairs, uh, was an Indo, Indo, I think an Indo com, Ashley Corner, um, conferred with me yesterday that they are taking miners to erect a flag, Camp Smith. But what she told me when she was in a meeting, they already did. It's already up there at Camp Smith. Um, this, this morning, Colonel Jer Jeremy and Jeremy, Colonel Even. Jeremy. Even. Yeah. Even. Yeah, sorry. Hey, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right on. I tried to read fast because my chair got to go. And so anyway, they, they're, they're working on the fact. I gave all the board members uh, um, the area where they're going to put up the flag. So I, I just want to thank the Cunningham and Marine Base to be taking the, the flag and take it into consideration that they're going to put up the flag. I want to thank my colleagues, especially Chair uh, Senator uh, Wakai, for hearing the bill. Chair Wakai is a leadership to hear the bill. I believe the conveyor of how we can importance of the bill of the rest of the world to learn the importance of Hawaii culture. And is we're taking steps to, with the senators to ensure our economic engine and the military and tourism correct the focus of Hawaiian and li a living in Hawaii. I hope that we speak with more voices where we can recognize 
and live by all, all our Hawaiian values. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Anything for you, Kurt. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Appreciate anybody it. else online or in person like to testify on Senate Bill 3016? If not, members, we're going to take a brief recess for at least PSM. We've got to get quorum. So if you could give me a few minutes and gather that, I um, appreciate it. Thank you for your patience. We're reconvening the Committees on Public Safety and Intergovernmental and Military Affairs and our friends from the Committee on Hawaiian Affairs for decision making. The two, two chairs have conferred and we'd like to pass this measure out, but making a change to change shall to may um, on, the, on the bill. And that is the only uh, suggested amendment. Any discussion? For the Committee on Public Safety and Military Affairs, since we do not have quorum, we would like to take a vote for our committee on tomorrow, Friday the 2nd at 3 o'clock in room 224. Okay. Two, two, five. Sorry. For the Hawaiian Affairs Committee, let's go ahead and take the vote then. So SB 3016, passing with amendments. Chair Shubikuru. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Yara. Aye. Senator Kehokalole. Aye. Senator Richards. Aye. All right, motion passes. Great, thank you. Thank Richard. you. Very good. All right, good afternoon, gathering into the second 101 agenda for just the Hawaiian Affairs Only Committee. Um, and so first we have SB 3113, increases allowable loan term for direct loans provided by DHHL to 40 years instead of 30. And I'll just note that we've actually heard these bills. This is a, the admin version of the same bills we heard on Tuesday. Just kind of keep vehicles alive, you know, so. But yeah, but go ahead, the DHHL is in support. Aloha Chair Shimabukuro, Vice Chair Favela, and members of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. The department stands on its written testimony in support. All of the bills on today's agenda were approved by the commission and also included in the governor's package, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Leo. Um, next, we have Oomanapono, LLC, in support. Stand, very good. Um, Karis Hawaii, in support. We have Regina Gregory. These are all in support. Lou Favorito. Cindy Freitas and Cade Yamlum. Anyone else here to testify on SB 3113? Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, great. We'll move on then to SB 3109. Here's practical effect to the intent of the legislature that funds appropriate in Act 279 uh, be available for expenditure until June 30, 2025. So we have again DHHL, we think they're in support. Um, we have Budget and Finance, also in support. Tax Foundation of Hawaii with comments. Are they on Zoom? Oh, Not Pono present Pono. on Zoom. Okay. Oh, Monopono LLC support. Thank you. Cares Hawaii this is all in support. Um, and, and that's it. Yeah, support. Um, anyone else here for SB 3109? You see none members, any questions? Nope. Last bill, SB 3112, increases the loan limit for direct loans provided by DHHL to 75% of the maximum um, instead of 50%. And so DHHL is in support. And then we have Hold Monopono LLC support. Very good. We also have all these in support as well. Cindy Freitas, Kate Yan Lum, Jan Makepa, and Karis Hawaii. Anyone else here for SB3112? None members, any questions? Okay, let's just go into decision making then since we already voted on these. So recommendation actually is to, yeah, we're gonna pass. We'll start with SB3113. And this is uh, no technicals, right? That's an eight, 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 yeah. So we're gonna pass as is. Question. Oh, a question. Yeah, just, just so, first. no, this is a, we passed a duplicate of this bill previously. Yes, it was uh, introduced by Senator Kiyoho Kodoli. But we took action already? Yes. Yeah, these yeah. are the admin versions. Yeah. So what is the reason for moving these? I, I guess I just thought it'd be good to just have multiple vehicles, just in case. So that okay. All right. So we, we, we let Ways and Means pick 
which ones um, or actually judiciary and what yes. reason means to pick which ones yeah levels, I guess um, yeah do you have an indication that it might pass two over probably not okay I would think they're gonna pick one or the other okay all right thanks thank you okay so uh sp3 any other discussion SB three one one three to pass as is. Chair Shervakuru. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ihara. Aye. Senator Keo Kolole. Aye. Senator Richards. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. SB three one zero nine again to pass as is. Any discussion? Okay, then Vice Chair. Chair Shervakuru. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ihara. Aye. Senator Keo Kolole. Aye. Senator Richards? Aye. Motion passes. And finally, SB 3112 to pass as is. All right, Chair Shubakuru? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Hara? Aye. Senator Keo Kalole? Aye. Senator Richards? Aye. All right, motions are adopted. Thank you so much. We are adjourned.